And Dharam here say, whenever I leave the house, and on whatever thing my eyes fall on, Sabr. Allah Ta'ala says, Wallahu yuhibbu al-sabirin. Allah Ta'ala is lifted on the pillar. School governing body of South Coast Madrasa. Al-Abdusaruha Fatima. Wasallimu taslima hatta tanalu jannatan wa na'ima. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima hatta tanalu. What the world is missing today is the corporate Sufi approach. You'll find people in the world either focusing too much on business and missing out the balance and the beyond. Or there are people who are focusing too much on beyond and forgetting the business and balance. So the corporate Sufi message is the harmony of business balance and beyond. So in business there are four key messages. The first one is, one is how to be an effective goal setter, being focused and accountable. Whether you're doing a business where goal setting is required, whether you are running a family where goal setting is required, whether you have your own personal goals, doesn't matter. The more crystal clear your goals, the more focused you become. And if you have a mechanism of being accountable, either by a coach or a mentor or a supervisor or a spouse or a child or a friend, that makes you achieve your targets much better. So in life, you cannot do everything, but you can do anything. And that requires effective goal setting. The second point in business is how to be a transformational leader, not a transactional leader. A transactional leader tells you, I pay you, you work for me. I do this, you do for me. It's a barter system. Where the transformational leader is engaging, empowering, energizing. A transformational leader will engage you, whether it's a leader who's a parent or a CEO or a head of HR or marketing, doesn't matter. We're very engaging, will involve you, excite you. Uh, a transformational leader will empower you to give you that power to make decisions. And then uh, a transformation leader will also energize you by being very positive around you. And by the way, all of us are leaders in some capacity. A leader as a parent, a leader as a sibling, a leader in business, in all walks of life. And in business, there are many, many levels of leadership. So we are all leaders in some way. But the goal should be how to be a transformational leader, not a transactional leader. The third point in business is how to unleash your enormous power within. As a leader, how to unleash that enormous power you have within. The Sufi poet Rumi says, when you look at people's eyes, they are so small, but they can see the stars trillions of miles away. So similarly, you may be very small physically, but you have that enormous power inside you. So how do you tap into that power within? Not only do you tap into your power within, but you also enable others around you to tap into their enormous power within themselves. In a business setting, even in a family setting, you are able to tap into this enormous power your children have, your family members have, and that makes you very, very powerful. Also your community members as well. And the final point in business is, how do you build your business with trust and connection? When you have a business built with trust and connection, you have long-lasting relationships. Otherwise, somebody comes up with something cheaper, they go somewhere else because there is no trust, there is no relationship. It's really a question of ethos, pathos, and logos. Ethos is the trust and foundation you create between people around you. Pathos is the relationship by which you build your business. And logos is the logic you use to create your outcome. So, whatever business you're running, ask yourself, am I an effective goal setter? 
Am I focused or do I get sidetracked very easily? And am I accountable for the results I create? If you have that mechanism of weekly goal setting for yourself, weekly goal setting for your team, and focusing on a tight set of priorities, because if you have too many priorities, you have no priorities. Ask yourself, are you really a transformational leader? How much do you engage your people? How much do you empower your people? How much do you energize your people? Are you a great listener? Do you talk one third and listen two thirds? Or is it the other way around? And do you really, really tap into your power within? Have you found your birthday gift? What Hafiz, the Sufi poet, talks about. Finding your birthday gift. The gift you are born with. And finally, you know, do you build your business with trust and connection? Are you authentic? Are you real? Are you sincere? Do you really care about the people you work with? And if you don't have that kind of uh, connection, you cannot have long-lasting relationships. So business is important, very important, because it's a foundation. It gives you that stability. It gives you that security. It gives you the means to be able to do good things, to do charity, to help others, because you have a foundation in your life. And therefore, in any faith, business is not looked down upon. Business is very much valued, especially and uh, more importantly, we have to build any business with ethics, with principles, with values. That's the foundation by which we build our business. Because without that, there is no foundation. So whether you are running a mega corporation, whether you have a small business, whether you are professional working in an, in an accounting or a legal firm, uh, or you're a doctor, doesn't matter. You, these principles apply universally. And all these principles can also apply in other walks of life. So that's one part of the equation, the harmony of business, balance and beyond. So we've covered the key components in business. In balance, there are again four components. The first one is making life balance your choice. People think, I don't have a choice. I cannot balance my life. Or people think it's either success or balance. The corporate Sufi approach is no. It's not either success or balance. It is success and balance. Because balance leads to a deeper sense of success instead of shallow. Now, how does one balance? There are many ways one can balance. Uh, I talk about the concept of the hour of power in my book, The Corporate Sufi. What is the hour of power? 20 minutes exercise, 20 minutes meditation, and 20 minutes reading something uplifting. Now you might say, Azim, where do I find this hour from? I'm so busy in my work. So then I ask you, what do you do the last hour at night? You have a remote control, you watch television, and nothing is coming, but you keep flicking channels and one hour is gone. Instead, if you slept an hour earlier, woke up an hour early, and did 20 minutes meditation, 20 minutes exercise, and 20 minutes reading something uplift you, uplifting, you start your day with a bang, something for your body, something for your mind, something for your spirit. It's amazing kind of start to your day. And that one hour you invest in the morning significantly enhances the next 23 hours. You're more dynamic, you're more energetic, you're more powerful. So the idea is, how do you start your day with that bang so you get a biggest bang for your buck? And then you find yourself, your energy is very, very high and your productivity is very, very high. Secondly, the aspect of imbalance is how do you become a, a great time and self-manager? Not just time manager, but a self-manager as well. When you become that, you become more efficient and more effective. You know, most people do lots of things. They work very hard. They work many, many hours. But the reality is, it's not how many hours you work. It's what you get done in those hours. I give a tip. Before you go to sleep at night, write down three things you would like to complete. And if you can complete those three things, by the end of next day, you'll say, my day was phenomenal. You'll say, my day was phenomenal. I gave this tip to a chairman of a bank because he was struggling with his time. And I told him, can you do this uh, exercise as a starting point of our coaching arrangement? Next morning, he calls me at 9 o'clock in the morning. He said, Azim, Azim, you won't believe this. I said, Chairman, what happened? Did somebody die? He said, no, 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 no. 
I said, what happened? He said, you know, he told me this thing to do three things the next morning. I said, yes. He said, it's nine o'clock in the morning and I'm done with three things. I said, chairman, I didn't mean doing something very small. You have a whole day to do those three things. So you need to choose something very important, not very small things. He said, no, 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 no. I said, what happened? He said, I had a tax problem that I was procrastinating for six years. Every day I looked at it, it's too much, I park it away. But when you told me to do this the night before, I decided I want to finish that. I woke up early in the morning, I got the whole problem solved. I did two more important goals and it's not even nine o'clock in the morning. That's the power of being really, really clear. What do most people do in the morning when they wake up? They spend five minutes, 10 minutes deciding what clothes to wear. Then they go in traffic and complain it's traffic. They go to work and they're excited, but suddenly a phone call comes, one email comes, one interruption comes. And before you know, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. And you say, my God, where did the time go? The reality is, as the first hour goes, so goes your day. If your first hour doesn't start with a bang, your whole day is gonna be wasted. Yeah? So there are enough, there is enough time in the week, there are 168 hours in a week. Even if you sleep 50 hours a week, you're left with 118 hours. So the idea is how to be an effective time, time uh, manager and doing the most, most important things first and leaving the rest for later on. So we've covered two key components in balance. One is how to make life balance a choice and how to be an effective uh, time and self-manager. <laughs> Welcome back. In part one, we covered two key aspects of balance. One was how do you make life balance a choice? And yes, you have a choice. Uh, whatever you do in your life, you have a choice. The moment you say you don't have a choice, you become totally disempowered. And the second aspect we covered in, in balance was how to be uh, a great time and self-manager, how to manage your time and also how to manage yourself. Some people become very emotional when somebody says something to them, but the reality is what other people say doesn't become the truth. If I call a flower with any other name, as Shakespeare would say, the flower would still smell the same. So the idea is that the truth is always the truth. Other people do not define who you are. So managing yourself also allows you to be a better time manager because you don't let your energies deplete by other people's comments and reactions. The third aspect of balance is how to be a great change manager. In the world we are living in, there's constant change. Everything is changing around us, technology, uh, the environment, circumstances, and people get a bit ruffled by change. But the reality is change is good because sometimes in life when change happens, it makes you better. Sometimes you have a breakdown. From breakdown, you can create breakthroughs. So sometimes you need that breakdown to create breakthroughs. If you're not constantly looking at yourself and how I can change for the better, how I can have this fresh approach, how I can start anew. If you're starting a, a week, how can this week be a new week? If you're starting a new month, how can this month be a new month? If you're having your birthday, how can this birthday be a new birthday? Every morning you wake up, it's a new day, it's a fresh day. And by the way, with every breath you take, Every breath you take, you become a new person. So how do you constantly look at yourself and evolve, change for the better, change for the positive? And the only thing that doesn't change or should not change is your principles and values and ethics. Everything else around you can change for the better. And you should be very open to look at changing for the better. But don't change your principles because principles are universal. They are everlasting. They are timeless. So that is a very important piece that one should not forget. 
And the final component in balance is how to be an emotionally intelligent leader, leading with your head and leading with your heart. In the olden days, you could be an IQ leader, an intelligent quotient leader, but today you require emotional, emotional quotient, leading with your head and heart. And emotionally intelligent leaders are more effective than IQ leaders because people want to be valued, they want to be cared, they want to be you know, understood. And when you don't have that kind of process, you don't get the best from people around you, whether in business or in your home or in your community. So if you practice that art from operating from these two places, you will find, especially in the new world, which is more empowering, which is information based, which is knowledge based, it's not the old industrial base, base EQ becomes even more important. So in balance, we've covered four key areas. One is we've covered how to make life balance a choice. You have a choice and making those right choices during the hour of power, 20 minutes exercise, 20 minutes meditation, and 20 minutes reading something uplifting to do something for your body, something for your mind, something for your soul. Allowing time, scheduling time with your spouse, a date night maybe, time with your children. You know, maybe if your children are very young, put your children to sleep at night, telling them inspiring stories, bond with them. It's not how many hours you put with the family, but what you do in that hours to make your family time a quality time, not just a quantity time. So balance is a very important piece and it leads to more success because the more your mind is active, it helps your body, helps your soul. More your body is active, helps your mind, helps your soul. The more your soul is nourished, helps your mind, helps your body. So the synergistic effect of the body, of the mind, of the soul. Managing your time and self also allows you to have more efficiency, more effectiveness. And if you focus on the big things, the big rocks, then the small rocks will look after themselves. But the question is, do you know what the big rocks are? And are you investing your most important time on the big rocks? Do you start your day with the most important things before you get caught up in firefighting? Are you able to change? Can you be a better parent? Can you be a better leader? Can you be a better community worker? Can you be a better brother or sister? Can you be a better child? Yes, you can. And everything you do, you do a little bit better. And little by little, you create big things. Drop by drop, you create the ocean. Because excellence is not an act. Excellence is a habit. Excellence is a game of inches. Every one thing you do, you do a little bit better. And if you're changing in that mode, then change becomes a very positive outcome. And as a leader at all walks of life, in all levels of business, you are a leader. Lead with your head and lead with your heart. People don't care how much you know, but they want to know how much you care. And the final piece of the harmony of business, balance and beyond is beyond. And in beyond, we have four key messages. The first one is, how do you find joy? How do you find satisfaction in your work and in your personal life? People go to work because they want to make a salary. But there is no literature that says you cannot have fun at work. If you enjoy your work, you sprint to work, you're excited, you're passionate. A work should not be a chore. Usually there's some part of work you do you really actually love doing. The other parts of the work you do you don't really enjoy doing. So how do you do more of what you enjoy, what you're good at doing, and delegate some things that you're not good at doing? But that requires observation, what you're good at doing, what you enjoy doing, what frustrates you, and looking around in your team to see who are the other people in your team who can do things that you're not very good at. And that enhances your joy at work. Nobody says that house cannot be a fun. You can go home and have fun. You know, have fun with your children, with your spouse, with your parents. If the house is a fun environment, you want to spend more time at home. So create those environments. We have the capacity to create those environments, to do things that we both Everybody enjoys in the family. Second part of uh, Beyond is how to create power of giving. How to create abundance through giving. People think that giving is a spiritual act. People think that giving is charity. Yes, giving is spiritual. Yes, giving is charity. But actually, 
It's a very powerful business tool. When you give to your customers extraordinary value, they give you more business. When you give them extraordinary value, you wow them. They tell their friends to come and meet you. You build your business amazingly. When you give to your colleagues, there is more harmony, more teamwork, more camaraderie. When you give to your juniors, coaching, mentoring, they produce better. You go home and give to your spouse, there is more love and harmony. You give to your children, they become more secured. You give to your community, you build better credibility for yourself. So actually, giving is a very potent force, a very powerful force. And it works in all walks of life. Not just in charity or spirituality. But in all walks of life. The more you give, the more you create. The more you give, the more you have. The more you give, the more you find. The more you give, the more you receive. If you have closed fists, you can't receive. But if you open your fist and give, you can also receive. The more in the flow of giving you are, the more giving flows through you. The more in the flow of abundance you are, abundance flows through you. So don't have this scarcity mentality. Don't have the closed fist mentality. Give of your knowledge, of your wisdom, of your resources, of your love. And suddenly you find you create. The universe is always giving. The sun gives its light to all the universe, not judging. You know? The flower gives its perfume to every passerby, unasked. Nature is always giving. And if you want to be part of that nature, you want to start giving as well. The third aspect in beyond is how to be a spiritually quotient leader. You have IQ, you have EQ, now you have SQ, spiritual quotient, inside out approach. You know, there's a beautiful quote which says that a mediocre leader tells people what to do. A good leader explains. A superior leader demonstrates, whereas a great leader inspires. So what kind of leader are you? Are you a mediocre leader? Are you a good leader? Or are you an inspiring leader? But how can you inspire others if you're not inspired from within? You have to be inspired from within before you can inspire others. It's an inside-out approach. And that's where your spirituality comes in. In spirit. Inspire. In spirit. Connect to your inner core so you can help others. Now that requires quiet time, meditation, reflection to make you have that habit and finally in beyond how do you transform negative ego into positive pride my 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 tough one how do you transform negative ego me mentality into positive pride that yes you have confidence you have strength you have gifts but the gifts were given to you they're not yours they were given to you by your creator so you are humble and use that gift to make a world a better place. Instead of becoming negative in terms of your ego. And most unhappiness in life stems from ego. Because you become so self-centered that you forget that the purpose of life is really not about you. But about a purpose, about a meaning. So four important things and beyond. One is how to find joy in your work and in your life. Number two, how to create Abundance through giving. Number three, how to lead with your spirit to be a spiritually quotient leader. And finally, how to transform negative ego into positive pride. So here you have it, the corporate Sufi approach. The harmony of business, balance and beyond. Make sure you're an effective goal setter. You're a transformational leader. You are unleashing your power within and helping others to unleash their power within. You are building your business with trust and connection. That's your business. In balance, make sure you make life balance a choice. Be a time and self-manager. Make sure you try through change and adapt through change. And be an emotionally intelligent leader. And in beyond, make sure you find joy in your life and in your work. Create power through giving. Be a spiritually quotient leader. Be an inspiring leader. And finally, transform your negative ego into positive pride. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima hatta tanalu jannatan wa na'ima Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima hatta tanalu jannatan wa na'ima Sallu 
عليه وسلم تسليما حتى تنال جنة ونعيما صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما حتى تنال جنة ونعيما صلوا عليه